Delia, I don't know if you want to welcome their people coming in and let them know kind of what we're doing and all that. Oh, great. Wonderful. Ah, excellent. Thanks, everybody, for coming. Um, I hope you all are enjoying the week that we have already had set up and meeting new people. Um, this is our second event for the day and on Black Owned Healing, and I'm, I hope you all have been getting some much needed healing from the week. I'm Delia Steverson, and I would like to introduce the other individuals that are here as well. We have Kimberly Burdine, um, and we have our wonderful interpreters, Carly James and Rodney Levon. And of course, the main speaker for the day, Leroy F. Moore Jr. And a little bit about Leroy Moore. He is the founder of Crip Hop Nation. And since the 1990s, he has written the column Illin' and Chillin' for Poor Magazine. Moore is one of the founding member, members of the National Black Disability and Activists around police brutality against people with disabilities. Leroy has started and helped start organizations like Disability Advocates of Minorities Organization, to Sins and Ballot, to, of course, Crip Hop Nation. His cultural works include film documentary, Where is Hope, Police Brutality Against People with Disabilities. He has spoken word CDs, poetry books, children's books, like Black Disabled Art History 101. His graphic novel, Crip Hop Graphic Novel Issue Number One, Brown Disabled Young Woman Superhero Brings Disability Justice to Hip Hop, was published by Poor Press in 2019 and 2020 under Poor Press. Leroy also published Black Disabled Ancestors, which serves as the foundation for his talk today. Moore has traveled internationally, networking with other disabled activists and artists, and has also written, sang, and collaborated to do music videos with Black disabled men. So we welcome your questions at the end of this event, and you can submit them using the question or the chat feature. So without further ado, I'll let Leroy take it away. Hello, people. So thanks for being here today. And I want to just jump right into it. So we're going to get into the video and I'll be back. Awesome. They sweated in the bow of the vessel bound to wear. They could not imagine when they saw the sky that smelled the sea, they wept. Where am I? Why, God, are they so cruel? How many days has it been? Why do they keep taking my wife? She doesn't say anything anymore. The air smells different. It's hard to move. We only walk once a day. It's hard to walk with these irons on my feet. These chains have taken my beloved, my son, my family is no more. So let's take a break and breathe because I know that's heavy. Um, like I said, I'm Leroy Moore and the title of this presentation is when can we come home? Healing open wounds of black ableism by speaking black disabled ancestors through poetry and introducing crip hop politics. So a little something about the video. The video was done by crip hop member, founding member Keith Jones, and it. It's, it's a video that starts um, a two-man show calling um, The Black Experience, myself and Keith Jones. So talking about the Black Disabled Experience in America. So I want to go on and show um, the cover of my book, Black Disabled Ancestors. So we have the Jerry Page. This is the cover of the book that just came out. And it came out under Poor Press. And Poor Press is in Oakland, California. 
Poor Press is, is um, under Core Magazine, which I started to write a column for that magazine back in the early 90s. And it was a column of, um, it was, the article was based on a police shooting in LA of Margaret L. Mitchell, a black disabled woman in LA. And that article came out in, um, I think, 98. So here we are once again. And like I said, you know, um, Poor Magazine has been doing the work um, around poverty, disability, race. You can go to um, poormagazine.org and check out their work. And like I said, they also have a press, Poor Press, and my book, Black Disabled Ancestors. You can get that at Poor Press. So the reason why I wrote Black Disabled Ancestors because a lot of um, our, our society, our community, don't understand that um, disabled people have ancestors and Black disabled people have ancestors that really contribute to our living today. So, um, you know, from Harry Tubman, to to Brad Lomax, and I'm going to get to those names in my um, presentation. So Poor Press, you know, go to Poor Press, get the book, and let's go on. I'm going to read um, a poem. It's in, you know title of this presentation. When when can we come home? So here it goes. We must heal our wounds. The time is coming soon. You gave us so much blues. It's all up to you. When can we come home? We tried to call, but there's no dial tone. Can't flex, cause no one answers our texts. So you tell me what's next. Always feel like we are alone. Like we've been kidnapped at birth on a spaceship leaving Earth just to get services. Black ableism waiting. So this is how it is. We must heal our wounds. The time is coming soon. You gave us so much blues. It's all up to you. When can we come home? We have multiplied. This time, there is no bye-bye. We are looking at you eye to eye. This is a conversation, not a fight. We are healing our wounds. The time is now. You gave us so much blues, but it's not up to you. We are coming home. So I, I say that because the Black disabled people um, have so much wounds from the Black community that it makes it so hard to come home and to work in our community. So why have we, the Black community, had someone's wounds? Let's go back to the video under slavery. And under slavery, you know, the slave masters, you know, idea around disability was to kill it. So a lot of Black slaves was thrown overboard on those slave ships. A lot of black disabled slaves were killed because they because of their disability. So because of this attitude that the black community still holds on to about hiding your disability or shaming your disability, 
are overcoming your disability, which makes no sense because we we can't overcome our race. Our disability is our, our identity. So because this is so prevalent in the black community and because of racism in the white disabled community, the black community has been left behind in a lot of education that the disability rights movement has provided. So because of that, we have open wounds that, that needs to be healed. So can we show the cover of Black Disabled Ancestors? So, so that's the cover. Let me explain the cover. The cover is myself as an elder on the porch. And I'm looking up to my ancestors. One is here at Tubman with her rifle. And one is Al Hitler. And Al Hitler was a jazz singer and also marched with Martin Luther King back in the day. And on the grass is my three wheel bike which I have, <laughs> and my cane. So I, I show this because, and I've written this book, because a lot of Black digital ancestors, you know, provided education, provided a solid foundation of their activism, you know, here telling me, all know about Harriet Tubman. And, you know, these stories need to be out there for our Black disabled youth coming up. So Poor, Poor Magazine and myself go into schools and go into colleges and teach these stories. So I want, I want to, um, go to the picture of Jim Crow and Porgy. So this is the first story in the book. And if you know the story of Porgy from the play, Porgy and Bess, Porgy had a disability. And Jim Crow, a lot of people don't know, a lot of people take Jim Crow and only talk about the legal side. And, you know, they don't talk about the real person. Jim Crow was a real person. Jim Crow was an elderly disabled man that got um, ripped off by a Jewish white man that um, came to Jim Crow. Jim Crow was dancing in his community, and this white Jewish man came to Jim Crow, offered him money for his clothes and offered him money to teach his dancing. And Jim Crow, being a poor black elderly man, said, yeah. And, you know, because of this, we have, we have back in the day, minstrel shows because that white man took uh, Jim Crow's dancing and his way of dress to the stages and to the courtrooms. So I wrote, I wrote this poem called The Real Jim Crow. And before we get to the poem, I want to go back to the story. The story is Porgy and Jim Crow, and so they meet downtown Oakland, and they talk about Black disabled men back then and Black disabled men now. And they talk about how both of them got their um, identity ripped off by white Jewish men. You know, Porgy had the same thing. You know, he the, the real Porgy died in poverty, but um, George Gershwin took Porgy's name and made a play out of it. So so these so so the first story 
in the book as these two black men talking about, about their lives. So now I'm going to go to the poem. The poem is entitled The Real Jim Crow. Jim Crow, Jim, Jim, Jim Crow, Jim, Jim, Jim Crow, Jim, Jim, Jim Crow, Jim Crow, Jim, Jim, Jim Crow. Will the real Jim Crow please limp up? You were more than just policy, just dancing in, in your community, theft of your identity. Some say you were a myth. Elderly black disabled man just gone poof. White man took your clothes and dance moves to the stages and courtrooms institutionalize you, but what happened to you? Your full name, Jim Crow, or some claim, Jim Keff. People wrote you were lame. You were an African slave. Your song and dance twisted displayed how blacks behave. People came from far and near to watch and hear as people emulate and got paid. While you, the person in history, fade. Now people speak your name, but not the person. They should be ashamed. Passing down incomplete stories. We will never, we will ever know the real Jim Crow. This is black disabled history. Just like the real Porgy, Jim Crow died in poverty. From minstrel shows to hip hop shows, the dance inventor we still don't know. Myths are fact, I will not let you go. Keep on dancing and singing the real Jim Crow. Jim Crow, Jim, Jim, Jim Crow. Jim Crow, Jim, Jim, Jim Crow. Jim Crow, Jim, Jim, Jim Crow. So let's go to what's Crip Hop. And Crip Hop, Crip Hop Nation started 12 years ago with myself, Keith Jones, and um, the late um, Rob the Noise Temple. Rob the Noise Temple just passed away a couple of weeks ago, and he um, was the DJ and the keyboarders of the Sugar Hill Gang. So, you know, Queer Pop Nation is more than just music. We do activism, we do journalism, and we also come up with terminology to really um, display people with displays around the world. Queer Pop has chapters in all through Africa, Spain, all through Europe, and Brazil. So let, let's look at this um, clip. This clip has, was taken from our 10th anniversary that happened in 2017. And we had an event at, um, in East Oakland. So let's take a look at this video. A decade ago, the only thing we ask is to remember it is always more than you. On an island by the sea with rainbow colored people 
Happy as can be light is in your eyes. The look of lies that disguise you apply once a year for people like mine. I, I am so proud of this little book that I gave uh, thanks to Poor Press and and because uh, I am a survivor of a learning disability and after losing all that we owned, all the money, that meant eating cereal with water and having to listen to my mother be scrutinized by her sister. She was wild and loose and untamed in her youth, always attracted to the bad boys in the neighborhood. Too bad she didn't realize or believe that she was the prize. My first two years of school, I am almost at my door for the day. Pop um, ten years, ten year anniversary, and you know I want to talk about what 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 we've been doing because we've been doing a lot on what I call SSI dollars. Um, we get no funding because I've been down that road of nonprofits, and my father's been down that road for nonprofits. So we do this straight from our pockets and straight from donations. So for example, um, Queer Pop Nation um, held an online concert a couple of weeks ago to raise funds for two organizations. One is on um, Warriors on Wheels and that's in Detroit, Michigan. And it's a black disabled women's um, organization that they found to serve um, the disabled community at this time. So they have um, food delivery. So we raise money for them and we also raise money for um, a rehab center in New York that has a group of black disabled men and they've done what's called reality poets. So they use their um, artwork to heal from not only their wounds, but to teach other black men about street violence. So we raised um, $3,000 for those two organizations. In the online concert, and hip hop artists from Brazil, all through Africa, US. Um, I think we had, yeah, we had Binky from Germany. So it was an international um, concert online. You can um, go to YouTube and type in Crip Hop Nation with a K and see that concert. So we did that last year. 
we put on an all African disabled musician tour in the Bay Area. So five disabled African dis yeah, disabled African musicians came here to the US to Berkeley, California. And we um, traveled through the Bay Area doing um, concerts and workshops talking about disabled people in Africa. And this is extraordinary because we did this all on an SSI budget. And the artists came here, we slept in my one bedroom apartment, but you know, we, we did it. And so because of that, um, we're talking about doing a South African festival and we teamed up with Lux Matutu in South Africa. And we were um, going to do a festival in, in South Africa, um, but um, because of this COVID-19, we had to postpone it but we're still looking to do a book together to um, highlight disabled African musicians in the US to disabled African musicians in Africa. So those, so those are you know, types of works that we do. We also, years ago, I think it's like four years ago, we raised, um, money to get two wheelchairs to Uganda for a single father that had two disabled daughters. So they need wheelchairs, so we um, raised the funds and shipped the two wheelchairs to Uganda to the single father. And because we did that, um, the, the daughter came back and said, you know, we love Crip Hop, but I need to go to school because she wanted to be an activist like myself. So we got back on the, the wagon and raised money for two years of her schooling. So now she's becoming a disabled um, activist in Uganda and her school named one room after Crip Hop. So those, those are the types of works that we're doing with no funding. Um, also, you know, because I'm a journalist and I'm a writer, Crip Hop has put out language because we need language to really come together as Black disabled people. So we put out, of course, Crip Hop and a lot of people think that CRIP, you know, stand for, you know, the gangs, you know, Crips in the Bloods. But if you really read that history, it comes from people with disabilities. So we put out CRIP Hop when we first started. And um, last year, I put out what's called Afro CRIP because we all know that um, disability is not only in the US, it's international. So we wanted to connect all um, African people with disabilities in the African diaspora. So we put together what's called afro -crip. And that's a terminology, you know, to bring us all under one umbrella. And the latest terminology that I mentioned earlier is the Black ableism. And Black ableism, like I said earlier, is in the Black community. And you know, like racism, sexism, Black ableism is, is discrimination toward Black disabled people in, in the Black community. So those, those are the terminologies that we put together. And um, also I want to talk about 
you know, black is used in cultural movements, you know, from police brutality as we living in today to hip hop. Unfortunately, you know, disability is a hush hush issue. And I've been doing activism around police brutality since 84. So I saw, you know, El Eleanor Bumpers in New York that was um, shot in her own place in New York. And she was an elder with a disability. And also, you know, I've been involved in hip hop since the beginning. And, you know, never seen, you know, people with disabilities or never seen those two movements talk about disability. So because of that, you know, Crip Hop, once again, put out um, a film documentary called Where Is Hope? And Where Is Hope deals with police brutality against people with disabilities. And that came out in 2016. And we also did um, a CD, a hip hop CD at that time. So, so my, my activism goes back to the early 80s. So I want, want to go on to my um, being a lecturer on college campuses. I've been a lecturer on college campus for almost 20 years. You know, from Harvard to UC Berkeley to, um, you know, all over. And what, and what is so surprising, you know, that I haven't been invited to a Black, a black college. And can you believe that I've been doing this for almost 20 years and it hasn't been invited to an HCB or HBCU? So that tells you right there that um, the, this kind of education is needed in the Black community. And I wanted to talk about the National Black Disability Coalition that myself, Jane Dunham, and other people started um, years ago. And we tried to um, get universities to do Black disabled studies. You know, so that's still going on. And you can go to blackdisability.org to read about the national Black Dis Disability Coalition. Now, I want, I want to read a poem, you know, talking about education and higher education. I want to read a poem called Black Scholars. Black Scholar, you make me holler. Race, class, and sex, 2020s. Still, I'm complex. Black scholar, come back to the community. Locked in ivory walls. You have big words, but is that all? Black scholar, you make me holler. Race, class, and sex, 2012. Still, I'm complex. How can you be so ableist? Why disability constantly don't make it on your list? Like Black Panthers, we will always pump our fists. One day you will become us. No more fuss. Read my books. Listen to Crip Hop hooks. Black scholar, what is wrong? You seem shook. All of your pieces of paper don't make you smarter. We are not in the archives. Come with us, live our lives. Black scholar, you make me holler. Race, class, and sex, 
2020 is still uncomplex. However, you are so simple. You don't even know who's your people. Let's destroy the table. Make the gathering place accessible. Glad to meet you, Black Scholar. Finally, we are coming together, realizing we are brothers and sisters, educating each other. So I want to end today with um, just a little discussing on you know, what Black Disability Studies can look like in my book, Black Disabled Art History 101. So in, in academia, it seems like subjects are so far apart, but it, it should not be that way. You have Black studies, you have Disabled studies, you have Women's studies, but all of them can be mixed together. And Black Disability Studies have stories that you can learn from, from political to art, to protest. There's so much that, that a class can teach you. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave you today and also be, before going on to that, once again, the National Black Disabled Coalition did a whole curriculum around Black Disabled Studies. You know, go, go to that website and look at it and really study it. So I, I wanna leave you today with my um, poem, video poem, Black Disabled Art History 101. Do you know your Black Disabled Art History? Well, it's about time you learn. This is called Black Disabled Art History 101. Sit down and listen, cause there will be a test at the end, displaying and speaking our history and culture through music, art, and dance. From slavery to homeland security, Black disabled artists roots grow deep. However, this garden is starving for recognition. The most famous classical pianist in the mid to late 19th century was a black blind artistic slave, Tom Wiggins, AKA Blind Tom was his slave name. His master used him to make money and left him poor and broken. Horace Pippin, the first black disabled self-taught painter, lost his arm in World War I, using his left arm to prop up his right forearm, crafting his first masterpiece depicting horrors of war. Oh, the price he paid for being black, poor, self-taught, and disabled. Blues is the black anthem. Attractive blind singers and musicians to make a living on the streets. Some made it into recording studios. Blind William McTell, born in 1898, played on the streets of Atlanta. Blind Willie Johnson, born around 1902, a street evangelist, stepmother to a lot, and young Johnson's eyes causing blindness. Johnson became the first gospel guitarist to record. He died of ammonia, 
as well refused to admit him due to his blindness, blind break and blind wounds. Birthdays are unknown. Blind John William Moon formed his own country company traveling all over the country. More than 8,000 concerts in the U.S., Canada, Europe, and Mexico. The most popular male blues recording artist of the 20s was Blind Lemon Jefferson. He was also a street performer, danced to the blues, rock, jazz, and hip hop vibrations under the wild zappers. A black deaf dance troupe feeling the rhythm from the motherland to the chocolate city. Listen to the melody heartbeat of a black deaf woman, Jay's fingers. Read, I'm a proud black deaf woman. Let's travel to Jamaica, where in the 50s, polio affected the island. Skelly, wise, and apple are Israel vibration. They met each other at Mona Rehabilitation Center got kicked out because of their religious beliefs in Rasta. Homeless, poor, and disabled began to sing on the streets. Now they are the fathers of reggae. Back to Africa, tribal dancing, to the drumming, guitar strumming, and singing of Abdul and Marim, a blind married couple, blending rock, pop, jazz, and hip hop with an international flavor. From Cuba to Asia, India to America, creeping into the hip hop nation. Paraplegic MC, Fizo, Day, Mad One, and the Black Cripple. Lifting the roof of oppression that suffocates the hip hop industry, throwing away the bling bling to create hip hop, politicizing our communities. Coming home to the Bay Area to swing from Charles Kerr's Blackwell in a bachelor's jazz poetry celebration. So get out your number two pencils for your final on Black Disabled Art History 101. Thank you. I, uh, if I if I had time, I, I I realized that I um forgot to show all my clip hop. What are they doing? Yay! Uh, so I'm gonna stay stay. Yeah. Sorry. So I, I want to go back to and I want to show you the cover of um my clip hop graphic novel that came out last year under Poor Magazine. So can we show the cover of the Crip Hop graphic novel? As, as that's coming up, I can um, talk about about the Crip Hop graphic novel. Um, I came up with, with an idea of doing a graphic novel where this um, Black disabled young woman, you know, is a poet. But um, she had this low self-esteem because you know she didn't see herself 
and ciphers in other places in New York. So, you know, she used, to, she used to go to like open mics and all that stuff and never saw herself until she went on the internet and saw Crip Hop. And because of that, um, her self-esteem grew and grew and her wheelchair became hip hop, where she is a DJ and she's scratching and she's spray painting and she's going around the city, you know, holding ciphers. And she goes back into time to myself because I grew up in New York. So she goes back in, in the time to myself when I'm outside of the cipher looking in and she shows me all my future of crip hop. So that's the basis of the story. And I, I use a lot of um, black disabled um, artists and hip hop artists at that time. Um, there's, there's this one slide that has cast two on it. And cast two was one of the first graffiti artists back in 1979 from New York. And um, he had an accident in the subway and lost his arm. And he continued to do graffiti all through the New York subway. So he's in um, the book too. So I can, I can stop there and open up for people if people want questions and stuff. Yeah, sorry about that. I just got kicked off. We wanted to open up your cover. Give me one second. We can still have questions while I'm finding that information. While Delia is figuring that out, we'll kind of open it up for questions. Um, just as a reminder, because of some of the issues that we were having with the Facebook stream, um, the event became a little bit more public. So if you're joining us from the accountability side and the training side as a non-Black um, uh, a non-Black person, then um, we welcome you and also ask that we reserve the questions for participating for the Black Wellness, um, Wellness Week. And so, um, we we'll, would love to open it up if folks have questions for Leroy as we um, attempt to get the slide up. And you can utilize the Q&A function or the chat. I know that um, I will share that a couple of people typed in, um, and this was kind of er one of your earlier um, poems, but they just, they wrote beautiful poem. Um, another person um, just expressed uh, appreciation and thank you and so much kudos for all you do, Leroy. So far, I'm not seeing questions. Uh oh, there's some coming through. Um, a person uh, indicated that they just wanted to say thank you for your wisdom and your passion in this work. Um, I'll be walking away from this with two pounds for the Black artists you've illuminated. And someone wanted to know whether or not there was a copy of the Real Jim Crow online. The Real Jim Crow, you know, I got that story in different links. But um, 
Yeah, I mean, the, the story is out there. You know, you just have to dig for it. And a lot of people say it's a um, folk story. You know, a lot of people, a lot of authors say that it's not true. And some authors say <laughs> it's not true. But like, like my poem says, you know, true or not, it's still there, you know. Jim Crow is still there, the person is still there, so, yeah. Another person wrote, this is beautiful and affirming as someone who identifies as black and disabled, dis being in parentheses. Thank you, thank you. And you know, I, I really wanna challenge the um, black academia to really, you know, think about black disability studies, black disability history, black disability arts, you know, really, you know, really open yourself up and really look at it because it's there and it needs to be taught. There's another question. Um, do you have any advice for Black people with disabilities advocates to do self-care during this intensive time of public displays of racism, ableism, and their intersections? Yeah, you know, it, it's, it's interesting. Um, the war, Warriors on Wheels in Detroit, they, they are just kicking butt. They, they do um, a weekly check-in to check in with people and they also do like a weekly um, cultural event, you know, on, on video. And that, and that I, I attended one of them. It's a really great way to, um, to check on your community and to, and to make a community, you know, um, because they've done this for the last couple of months, they've really established strong black disabled voices, you know, so, yeah. Awesome, another question um, or comment. Uh, for someone who is trying to incorporate more black disability work into their classroom, where would you recommend they start? I teach a black deaf class, but have not expanded to include other communities. Well, I, I, I don't want to be biased, but you can start with, you know, my, my books, you know, at Port Press, you know, um, you could, you know, go, go to the, the National Black Disability Coalition website. Um, you know, I've been doing lectures on college campuses for 20, 20 something years, you know, you can have us on. And if you want to go deeper and challenge the institution, <laughs> then you get on, you know, try to establish a black disabled course. You know. Awesome. One more question. The questions are rolling in. They're um, okay. Great. So another question. Hi, Leroy. Thanks for sharing your work with us. I was very moved by seeing how many for by seeing how so many were touched by your work. Let's say you get invited to an HBU, mm -hmm. what messages would you have for them? Also, how do you and other disabled black people deal with the wounds that come from being abandoned by the black community and the white disability movement? That's, that's like books, <laughs> you know, books about that. Right. Um, so let's go back to the first one. What what would I do if I was invited to a historical black house? I would like faint first because it's been 21 years. So wow. first I would faint and I would, you know, get get my wits and really talk about um talk about ableism and how that's you know institutionalized, you know, even in their colleges, you know, <laughs> talk about ableism and talk about how the institution can come out of this ableist thinking. 
through, you know, my works through the National Black Disability Coalition, through opening up their colleges to, to really teach Black Disability Studies, and to also take Black scholars to task around their work. I just, I, I it blows me. <laughs> It both the way that Michelle Alexander's book, which I love, The Real Jim Crow, has nothing around disability. It's, it's like, what? You know? You know, um, the, the film, the what, 14th a minute film? 13th. 13th? Doesn't talk about disability. I mean, I did it because I'm into health, but that's it. It's like, people, come on, you know, so really challenging our Black um, scholars, our Black activists. I mean, I just have to tell you the truth, you know, even Black Lives Matter had troubles dealing with disability. And not until recently, they're opening up to it. But, you know, these, these, this is the kind of education that needs to happen. And what 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 the National Black Disability Coalition and myself is saying that it needs to be a national campaign on black disabled issues. They do it in Africa all the time. I don't understand why the, the U.S. is so far behind it, because it needs to be a national campaign because the black community has been left behind around disability issues. The the white disability community has gone to disability arts, disability studies. I mean, and we're still, you know, at, you know, disability rights. And some of us are still at the medical model. And that's, that's a whole different um, conversation, the medical model of disability, of overcoming, of, you know, hiding. So that, that education needs to happen because it's really, like I said in my presentation, it's really um, separating Black disabled people from their own Black community. Because it, at first, the, you know, the mother or the father I have to go outside the black community just to get services. So if if, if black ableism is still there in the black, so of course a lot of black disabled people now are working at white, mostly white disabled organizations because it's 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 a little bit easier to work there because there's no black ableism, of course. They still have to deal with racism, but you know they they have the luxury of 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 being there because the white disabled organizations are you know are talking about issues of art and culture and all the stuff that that we want to talk about, but I, I think that um you know black disabled people need to come back home and do this education. And most of the time, this education is not a Ford Foundation grant. <laughs> you know, a lot of this time, this education needs to be done with pennies in, in your pocket, you know. And it's not about you, it's about the next generation of Black disabled youth coming after you. So they, so they can come home and do the work. We had, we actually had um, one person, Dr. Angela Miles, who um, was responding as well. And um, Dr. Miles, if you're available and would like to share some of the resources or maybe just one, because we are at time and we'll need to close out, but wanted to give you, give you a mic and um, allow you to, to share out if you'd like. Oh, okay. Thank you. Um, thank you, Leroy, for um, a great presentation. I've been a big fan and um, been inspired by work for a long time. I just was co-signing everything that 
Leroy was saying and just trying to add some context and letting people know that there are Black disabled people actually in academia. Like, we do exist. Like, there are some of us who have made it through the cracks um, and we are writing about this stuff. Um, I, I published, um, there's actually a series in, um, in Gender and Society on intersectionality and disability that I was a part of um, last year. So I can link to that. Um, but, you know, I am also, you know, disabled. So I'm also a part of the disabled community. So I don't just, I left academia because it's ableist. So, um, and because it's racist. Um, and I, um, I, you know, so I just wanted to point that out and just that I see ableism as an extension of white supremacy and as internalized um, racism. So when black people are being ableist, um, it's, it's part of that as well. And we can't be free as black people if we don't look at ableism because race is constructed in relationship to disability, always has been. So, um, but anyway, that's, I don't wanna take away from what you guys are saying. I will put in some more links um, and to people, but there's lots of, a lot more really where it came from of us doing this work. So I encourage you to do another session and inviting more people because, um, um, you know, there's a lot of us trying to do this work. And thank you, Leroy, for speaking truth to power as always. Thank you, Dr. Miles. And sorry, everybody, about that. I don't know. And I, I just figured out, Leroy, that your video didn't actually play for the um, poem, but if I don't, if we can make that available. I think I want to put that in the chat, the, the video along with the poem that, um, the last poem that we recited as well, if that would be okay. And also to echo Dr. Miles, we are um, making, um, compiling a resource list for um, us to work with in the classroom in terms of specifically blackness and disability. And if you all have any resources that we can add to it, it's just a beginning list. Um, we would love to add those to the resource list for on um, both sides, both the black wellness side and the training side. Um, so we'd love to have that. Other than that, thank you all for being a part of this wonderful, creative, much necessary time here. We hope that you all will have the rest of the day with us as well as we wind down. It's interesting that we're talking about Black ableism because um, our next event, are, one is a twerk fitness class, and we were talking about the ways in which uh, we can make this class more inclusive right to to multiple abilities so we're hoping that we would love some some feedback on that class as well and then later on you all should join us for the trap and paint um we will have an artist there showing us a design there are also coloring sheets if you are unable to get the materials that we would need for that as well so thanks, thanks, Leroy. Thank you for our wonderful interpreters. And of course, thank you for you all for joining in this presentation. Okay. Thank, thank you. you for having me. I'll keep this open for a little bit so people can copy from the chat. Thank you so much, Leroy. This is really powerful. It's a lot of great comments and feedback that we got. Okay, take care. Bye. Bye. Thank you for having me. You bet. Okay, I'm going to save this chat just in case. I'm just waiting for the last few people to trickle out just in case people are posting. So you all can definitely um, sign out if needed.
Okay. More people, looks like. Okay, I think I'm going to go ahead and close out. There's just one more person, their release. I'm not sure if they're, just in case they're copying, I guess I have a few minutes I can wait. cannot say enough to you all, um, Carly and Rodney, how much I appreciate you all's patience and, um, and, and us uh, working this out, especially in the context of this conversation. It just really highlights the, the ableism and, and um, our limitations, um, or my own anyways. Um, so I've really appreciated all that you all are, are sharing and information that I'm taking away from this too. Oh, um, or at least I see that you just joined. Um, we have another um, session that um, starts, let me see what time that starts. Uh, this was from the uh, When Can We Come Home? Looking at Black Ableism. That was from 2 to 3 um, Eastern time. And then we have um, a poetic process that will start at, um, at 3.30. So this will be um, recorded and accessible later. We weren't able to work out the um, streaming to Facebook. Um, there's, there's an issue with that. So, um, but yes, so you know, all of the events are Eastern time. The dates are listed as Eastern time. So hopefully we can catch you at some of the other events um, and all the events today are live. So, um, so check us out.